Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We are 18 miles north of New York City, right on the Hudson River, and we're in the village of Piermont. So this is the Empire Hose Company, also known as the Piermont Fire Department. They have a pretty unique building here. It was all hand built by the members. So let's go see how it's done. So we're gonna meet up with one of their ex-fire chiefs, four-time fire chiefs, currently I think second lieutenant. Uh, his name is Danny Goswick, and he's gonna show us around. Nice to meet you. You're Danny? I'm Danny. All right, thanks for inviting us up. No problem, thanks so, for coming. This is a beautiful area driving up here, right on the Hudson. Yes, this little is. village definitely feels like a vacation place. It actually is. In the summertime, we go from about 2,800 people to 15,000. Wow, so. can we take a look at your house? Absolutely, come on in. So Danny, as I was doing some of the research as I was coming up here, um, I noticed that this building was hand built by many of you guys, right? Yeah, back in uh, the, the late 80s, early uh, 90s, our paper mill closed and when the condos came in, okay. we did a, a study. The study required us to have a, a ladder truck. Okay. So basically, we were back then, we were just an engine company. So we had to actually de demo the building and rebuild the building. So the members, built the firehouse at okay. no cost to the taxpayer. Wow. We, um, we got all the steel from the old mill and basically my uncle, who was one of the chiefs at the time, was a mason. All of the craftsmen that were in the firehouse, we had uh, plumbers, we had electricians, we had gaffers, we did all the welding also. Right. So, so this is truly a family built, yes. community built firehouse. Yes, it is. All right. So you have a couple of different levels here. Can yes. you kind of describe to me and show me what you have? Sure. This is uh, basically our meeting room. Okay. Um, this was all built by the, by the membership. We actually did all the woodworking and everything. This definitely gives you that homey feel of the, that old traditional firehouse. It is. Um, yeah. Do you guys rent this out to different spaces? We, or actually, it... we just rent it out to our members. Okay. So, yeah, our, our fire department was uh, um, established in 1851. Okay. So, and we, you know, we're not just a, a fire department. We're Scuba team, EMS, do high angle rescue. We do everything. Wow, and you guys are all volunteer? All volunteer. Uh, right now we have uh, 30 EMTs. Okay. And we got a total of 72 members. Okay, okay. So. And what do you got on the wall? I know you got a lot of history up there. That's, um, that's our ex-chief's wall. Okay. Um, starting back from uh, Westervelt in the 1800s. Wow. So he was the first chief of the fire department, James Westervelt. Okay. Getting a little hard to see that picture now, but yeah, it, yeah, he's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the rest goes all the way down to uh, our last chief, okay. which is uh, Sam. And then you got a trophy case over here? Yes. We, we were very, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, we did a lot of parades. Yeah. But it's gotten to the point where, you know, parades are too expensive. At one point, we had our own band. Okay. We had uh, all the young kids from uh, the, our local community. And we had the, the Blue Phantoms band. The Blue Phantoms, yep. what a name. Yeah, and, it, and it's funny, a lot of the kids that were in the Blue Phantoms became firemen. Okay. But what we also did after that, you know, we had a couple tragedies in our, our village and we started an explorer group. Okay. So the explorers go from 12 to 16, and then once they turn 16, they can join the fire department. Nice. And our explorers get trained in everything we do. On, on, on every other Sunday, when we're not diving, they're getting trained in you know, firematics and uh, EMS. And, but now that we have our dive program going on, a lot of the explorers are going through the dive program because we can certify them by the time they're 16. And then they start the public safety dive program and then they train for two years and then we put them in a the river. That's awesome to see. Yeah. You know, it's unusual to see you know, that variety of rescue equipment yeah. in a firehouse. Yeah. Yes. So the diversity of that kind of equipment is huge. Yes. Um, how do you get these volunteers to come out? You know, we've been struggling across America yeah. to get volunteers. How do you guys do your recruitment and uh, get those to come out? We, um, we're big with Facebook. Okay. We do a lot of mailings. And you know, we put posters all over our, our little village and you know, we're, we're doing pretty good. But the, the, the biggest thing is family. 
a lot of us are family here. You right. know? I'm second assistant chief. My nephew is the chief. My son is the, uh, re he's an ex-chief and he's also one of the lieutenants. My daughter's EMS lieutenant and my niece is the uh, president of the company. Yeah, definitely a family affair. Okay. And that's good to see because that just gives you uh, a, an idea on how important the firehouse is yes. to a community. Yes. And when they join the firehouse, yeah. or when you join any firehouse, you become part of that family. Yes. We yes. may not be brothers in name, yeah. but by the time you and I join a fire company, we're going to be brothers. Well, the, the, the thing with us, too, is, you know, we're, we're, we were all tradesmen. And, you know, if you're having work done on your house, a bunch of us go help you work on your house, do sheetrock, we do electrical work, plumbing, we do everything. Right. So that's how we built this. So explain to me a little more how you built this building. You, you built the trophy, trophy case and everything? We built everything. Okay. Everything we, that's in here, we did. Okay. Yep. The tables, yeah. and I love the floor too. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, we, we had somebody do the inlay of the floor, but everything else, yeah, we built everything. Okay. We did all the sheetrock, all the block work. Actually, the, these, are, these are concrete planks under here. We okay. set the concrete planks. It's funny because you know, when I first started for the company, that I my real job is that I had two weeks vacation. I took my two weeks vacation working here. <laughs> what you a know? vacation! Yeah. You go to work to work on a vacation. And you didn't dare drive by when everybody else was working. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> the next monthly meeting, you were you were told about it. Now I know you got a couple members here today yes. that are just enjoying their Saturday yeah. afternoon. Yeah, actually, is this we, pretty uh, common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we had a run this morning. We're um, we pretty much are, are one of the the fast teams for our part of the town. Okay. So we had a fast team call this morning for a uh, chimney fire in one of the other uh, municipalities. Okay. Explain to me exactly what a fast team is. Some call it a rid team. You okay. know, here we call it a fast team. It's just basically a, a firefighter assist team to rescue fi down firefighters. Okay. But it's that essential service that the NFPA requires. Absolutely. And our guys are very, guys and girls, because we have a lot of females in the fire department, very well trained. I mean, we train fire medics every Monday night. Um, and that, that includes engine, truck, and rescue. We do a lot of rescue work. We're basically a rescue company. Okay. You know? If someone wanted to join, maybe they're watching the show right now, yes. and they're, they say, hey, I'm near there, or I'm near in yeah. the village. How do they get a hold of you to, to join at the department? Um, well, we have a Facebook page. Okay, um, which is what? Uh, Piermont Fire Department is our, our Facebook, yeah. okay. and um, the uh, website is Piermont Fire Department. Okay. Or you can go to our village hall, talk to one of our village clerks, because one of our village clerks is now one of our EMTs. <laughs> All right. And or stop by any Monday night on between seven and nine. Perfect. So we're always here for training. Okay. So. so if you guys are out there and you're watching this, you're in the area, you want to help out your community or join a fire department, this is the place to come. Yeah. So. This building, was this the original building? No, next door was the original building from 1851. Okay. And what else do you have up here on the second floor? Uh, we have a kitchen. Okay. And two bathrooms. Let's go see that. All right. So over here, you got a nice big kitchen, it looks like. Yep. Uh, another, uh, we just redid this two years ago, the members. Wow. And um, we basically, we did all the work. The only thing we didn't do was the uh, stainless work. Okay. You know, we did everything else. This is a professional gourmet yeah. kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Holy we, cow. The, the floor was actually rotten okay. because it was from 1851. So we reframed everything and I mean, it, it's built like a bomb shelter. Right. Because, right. You know, we, we're, like I said, we're all framers too. Got the big walk in fridge, yep. complete uh, stove with yep. multi burners, good prep area. Yep. Yep. You definitely can have a big party up here. Yeah, and th <laughs> this we also use this as a shelter during storms. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, and we have a generator in the back. Right. Um, so when, the, the biggest problem in our community is flooding. You know, during Hurricane Sandy, you know, we were, we were probably did 200 pump outs within, and actually we had to do, we went out during the height of the storm in our Zodiac, 21 foot Zodiac, to go check on a boat. Okay. Because that had broken loose in Nye, it came under the bridge, and a couple of the bridge workers thought that they saw somebody on a boat. So myself, uh, my son, and uh, another one of the uh, younger guys jumped on the Zodiac, and we were in the Hudson River in six to foot, eight foot rollers. You know, wow. but I mean, that's what we do. We're, we're basically a, a shelter, so when, during storms, People can come here. We have cots that we uh, that we supply, and we have a shower downstairs. Okay. And then when we know a storm is coming, we fill that with food. Okay. So, and yeah. we got amazing chefs because every fire department has an amazing. Yeah, everybody's chef. got at least one. Oh yeah, two. we have a bunch. <laughs> 
And then down here, it looks like you've got a new th kind of day room? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Tell me a little bit more about your history. Um, well, the fire department was started in 1851. Okay. Um, and basically, there was two departments, or two companies. There was Empire Host Company, which is this company. Yep. Then down by uh, the DPW, we had um, Protection Engine. That went away. Basically, the company here was a lot of the railroad workers because the Erie Railroad was big in the village of Piermont. That's okay. who actually built the pier. Okay. So, and you know, back then it was mainly, you know, tough, rugged railroad workers. So, and the, the, the company survived since 1851. We're the second oldest company in Rockland County. Okay. And you know, we, we're thriving. We got a lot of good people. You know? Right, right. Tell um, me a little bit about, more about yourself. How did you get into the fire service and how long have you been in the service? I've been in the service 40 years this year. Okay. I've been chief four times going for my fifth. I'm second assistant chief right now. And I am also a uh, NAWI certified uh, rescue scuba instructor. This room looks absolutely amazing. Yes, this yes. looks like one of those old cigar rooms yep. that you just kind of hang yeah. up with. Yeah. I noticed all the shields you got up front. Yes. Are those just your neighboring companies? A lot of people have the, the patch balls. Yeah. Is what's big now. I like the fact that you guys have yeah. shields. That, a, lot of those, a lot of those are from our neighboring companies. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you all look right. at that wall, that is the original wall from 1851. Oh, the brick. In yes. The, in, nice. We, one of our guys is a uh, mason. Okay. And uh, he reported it. He's actually our uh, superintendent at DPW. That's where we're very fortunate. During the day, our DPW guys, are, a lot of them are on the fire department, okay. so they help get the rigs out during the day. What does DPW stand department for? Department of Public Works. Okay. We have, they're phenomenal. Right. You know, you when you have snow, if you see in the hills as you were coming in, very steep. Our guys... When they're done, you could eat off the streets here. You know, you, you leave Piermont, it's like, you know, full of snow. These guys, <laughs> they're amazing. They take care of they're it. They're amazing. Now, behind the bar, can you explain to us what some of that equipment is that's up there? Well, that, that's one of the original lan lanterns from the 1850s. We had it in our trophy cabinet. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the nozzle, that's an old Navy fog nozzle, which actually we still use them on the fire trucks. We have a, a piercing tool that goes on that. Okay. That, I, that's... That's from the 1950s or wow. 1940s. Okay. And those two are one in the, they're the original nozzles from the 1850s. That's awesome. So we just had them all redone. That's awesome. So. And I see some of the dive pictures out there. Are you in any of those? Not these. Okay. No. Um, actually, our dive team started in 1956. Okay. We were one of the original fire department dive teams, if not the original fire department dive team maybe in the country but i know we're the original in the state okay those two divers up there the one to the right is my dad and the one to the left is my father-in-law okay so you know it's a, it is it's a family affair here but um you know my dad was my dad my father-in-law and one of our ex-chiefs up there don hardy there was seven original guys that started the dive team and uh, actually the last one of the original guys just passed away and every time one of our divers pass away, we take something like ashes or something, put it in a little urn, and we have a full ceremony for the diver at the end of the pier. All the membership line up, give them a last salute, bagpipes, families there, everything. We, we even invite like the congressmen and, and all of those guys. Well, because it should be done. It is, because yeah. I mean, to do what we do in that Hudson River, it's no joke, right. you know. Right. You know, we just we're we're working to get a stolen car out of there next weekend. Okay. Next week we're going to go out there with airbags and lift the car up. You know, and out there you're dealing with current, you're in zero, zero visibility, and it, it, there's times we're diving in two, three knot currents. And, okay. You know, when you can't see anything, and we've actually we even trained our guys to use jaws of life on the water. Okay. I used the jaws of life on a tractor trailer in 1991 that went off top of the bridge. Can't use the battery operator one no, kind of water. No. <laughs> That's why we're staying with hydraulic. There you go. Man, this no. is absolutely amazing. Yeah, we're I appreciate everything that you guys do. You got yep. some of the old parades yeah. you were talking about yep. and the, the bands. Yep. The different that, apparatus. This one picture up here, if you look all the way to the left, there's a, a young man named Tommy Pomplin. Okay. He was the he, he was the first line of duty death in Rockland County. And I'm thinking he might be the first line of duty death of a black man in the country. Wow. Because he was a member of the Empire Host Company in the 1850s. Okay. And he, he died, they had a fire in Nyack, and it was a, a Cedar Pale Factory. 
in the 1850s, and he died as a result of the fire. And maybe later on, we'll take a ride, and I'll show you the monument that we had dedicated to him. Yeah, that'd be because awesome. Because for you know, for so many years, he was never recognized. So it took me five years, but I finally got him recognized. So we'll, we'll take a look at the monument that we do dedicated la last year to. Him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it looks like you had uh, an old uh, yes, yep, the hand pumper here. Yep. Was that a soda acid yep. or a steam? Steam. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is awesome. See, these, this is the original firehouse. This is where we are right now. Okay. And these two apparatus actually fit in that bay where the ambulance is. So we on. added on to this side. Yes, okay. correct. That's making correct. sense. Now, now I'm getting a picture yeah. of it. Yeah, that, that, that first edition was done in the, eight, in the 1950s. There's a picture out there that shows you. But getting back to our history, our fire department ambulance, 100% volunteer. Okay. Uh, we're the last volunteer fire department ambulance in the county. And I think we're probably the last all volunteer ambulance in the county. Nice. Um, they started in 1952. Dive team started in 56. We also have a ladies auxiliary that basically back in the 90s, late 90s and early 2000s, I basically asked all of them to join to be EMTs. Yeah. So a lot of our ladies auxiliary are also EMTs and they started in 1932. Right. Now, before we head downstairs, you think we can go back into the bar there and talk to some of the guys? Yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. This was, this was the original right here that was built in the 50s. Okay. This was in 1976. So what we did is we had to rip that down. See the doors? They yeah. were like, they were short doors because it was a full, we were a full engine company. Right. So we ripped that down in 1988 and we basically built what we have now. Okay. So. That's, yeah. that's actually my uncle right there. He was chief at the time. Right. That's our chief's grandfather. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Interesting color uh, for the uh, yeah, outside that, of the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. 1976. <laughs> uh, yeah. Old Cadillac ambulance. Yeah, there. okay. Good picture of yeah. underwater oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Our dive team's like, we're, we're proud of that. Very proud of the dive team right. and the members that, because it, it. How many people do you have that dive? We, we got right now, we got 15 divers. Wow. And we're training big, more. Right. So we're training. That's a big pool. Yeah, we're training five more. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're training five more. Right. Uh, my granddaughter right now, she's uh, 15. She's one of the explorers. My grandson, he's 15. So when they're 16, they join the fire department. And, you know, we, we'll, we'll put them in the water, like on simple stuff, like if we're looking for a gun or something like that. Okay. But um, when it comes to, like, lifting a car, that's when... That's when you put the senior guys in. Right. Because, right. I mean, we've done, we do sewer dives, we do everything. Okay. You know? Right. How are you doing, guys? How are you? I'm Mike from Heroes Next Door. Larry. Larry? Larry. Okay. And you are uh, the chief? Yes. Okay. How long have you been with the company? 12 years. Okay. What got, what got you into firefighters? <laughs> That's my cousin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, family, uh, my grandfather was chief here three times. Um, Obviously, Danny's been four, five, I lost count now. Okay. Um, my younger cousin, Danny, has been chief too. Okay. It's a, it's a, it was a family thing. We've always been around since a kid. Okay. And finally joined when I came back from college. So you were born and raised in Pyramont, a village of Pyramont here. Yes. All right. Well, we appreciate your service. Thank you, Thank you for inviting us out. This is oh, definitely well. a unique experience for us. You know, getting the view of the Hudson River across yes. here is absolutely gorgeous. The, the village itself is gorgeous. So we thank you all for, uh, thank you guys for in, inviting us out and showing everybody that, what it's all about. So. All right, before we uh, look at the apparatus, I want to show you our um, radio room, which we also use at an emergency operations center during uh, severe storms and okay. flooding. Wow, ba this is nice. Yeah. This was also hand built by the members. Okay. All the woodworking. Right. Um, yeah. Last week we had uh, some flooding. We had like twenty something pump outs. So we uh, we took one of our ex chiefs. He was uh, stationed in here, and uh, he basically ran the emergency operations center. People were calling into here, and also on our radio we we have the capability of talking to the PD through interop. Okay. And instead of people calling nine one one and tying up the 911 lines, they would call into here, call the PD, because the PD has a separate number besides the uh, 911. Okay. And then the PD would contact us and basically tell us, respond to here for another pump out, so. Okay, but you are connected to 911. This isn't a dispatch center. This no, it's is not a, a dispatch. No, okay. no, no. And, you know, like during Hurricane Sandy, we had 
We have, uh, this is basically a shelter also, because we have a generator, we have a full service kitchen. Okay. We have cots. So in, instead of everybody being in the shelter upstairs, where everybody is right. congregating, yep. we can put additional people down here to help run the EOC in here. Right. It's I not like, the biggest, but it works. Like the nice 30 cubicles, yes. you got each your own work area, but yep. you also have the technology. Yes, we do. When I first kind of looked at the building, I was yeah. like, oh, it's kind of an older building, yeah. are they gonna have the technology to support it? But you really do. Yeah. No, we, we have some really smart guys in here. Right. But when it comes to that stuff, I'll <laughs> you, leave it up to them. You'll be both, yes. that's why I pay people. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's awesome. So we'll, uh, we'll head into the ambulance. Okay, so you got a single ambulance. Correct. And this is a, looks like a Ford, right? Yeah, it's a Ford E450. Okay. Um, and yeah, we, we just have one ambulance. And, well, what do you do if it has to go out for service? We uh, do mutual aid with either South Orange Town or Nyack Ambulance. Okay. We have and a very good working relationship with both ambulance corps. Yeah, that makes a big difference yes. when you're yeah. supporting each other. No, they're, they're very good. This is a BLS ambulance, as Correct. we mentioned before. Yes, we, um, our, our ALS unit is uh, Rockland Paramedics. Okay. And they basically, they ride around in a fly car and meet us on scene, and if they have to come with us for transport, they do. Okay. Now, this was the original apparatus bay, right? Correct. In here were those two older engines. Yep, we had two Peter Persh engines in here, okay. and uh, it was very tight. Yeah, absolutely. When did you guys get this ambulance? We got this ambulance in 2013. This ambulance was donated um, by the uh, Charles and Luann Henderson. Okay. And this isn't the only thing that they donated. Really? Uh, they also donated a six family house, um, which is basically housing some of our members, or okay. actually all, six of our members. Okay. And um, they donated additional funding for our dive team, uh, they helped purchase uh, uh, part of a fire truck. So they, they've done very well for, to us. That's definitely that community support yes, that yes. many of the fire departments rely on on yes. a regular basis. The fact that they donated a house that you put members in yes. is almost like a live-in program. We've traveled across the country now and we've seen multiple different ways to do yes. live-in programs to get those volunteers. You guys actually have a whole housing community, right? Yes, there's, there's a six family house and they have to make 65% of the runs. They have to drive the ambulance one shift a week, and they have to make 75% of the drills. That's pretty cool. And their rent is very low. Right, right. Now, because the area I'm coming up, they've got to be million dollar houses around yes. here. Yes, that's, that's on the low end. <laughs> okay. On the low end. Yeah, beautiful place. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's expensive. And, and right. the one thing I got to say about uh, our community, especially the mayor and village board, they're amazing to us. That's uh, good. You know, whatever funding we need, as long as we can show that we really need it, we get it. That's awesome. And uh, like, you know, and we have a great working relationship with our police department. Mm -hmm. They're an amazing group, and we work very closely together. And like I said before, our DPW, those guys are second to none. Yeah. You know? yeah. And a lot of them are firemen. Yeah. So. All right. And then we go across here to look at your other apparatus. Yep. So the first piece of apparatus. What do we have here? This is a uh, 2004 Pierce Saber. This this is our first new engine. This okay. has an all-wheel steer. What? All-wheel steer. Okay. And, well, you saw that you saw the hills coming into our village. Yeah, I actually had to do a backup and turnaround yeah. coming down. Well, this can make it. One shot. This big truck yes, can yes, make that turn. Yes. This truck can make turns that my pickup truck, Chief's car, can't. Okay. And like I said before, um, one of our ex-chiefs, he's basically our first new engine driver. Right. And he can get this truck any place that so we need having to get. an all-wheel steer does it take a little bit of extra driver training a little, training bit, a little bit a little bit yeah, yeah but for the most part i mean this this has all-wheel steer and it has crab you can pull up to a, a parking spot put it in crab and go right in okay yeah it's an amazing rig so elon musk was not the first one to no put it absolutely not pierce was <laughs> there you pierce go. was all right so. and what next to it this is our uh, squad we a, a few years back before before we got this, we uh, we had a, a pin job roll over, party traps upside down, and it took a little while for the the first engine on a, on a uh, pin job to get out. So you know we came up with the concept of having everything on a squad. We have the jaws, we have 50 gallons of foam, a foam tank, we have uh, a thousand gallon per minute pump with 500 gallons of water and basically 1,500 feet of four-inch hose. Okay. So we can do anything with this rig. Right, so this, we, is, this is your uh, Swiss Army knife yes. of the fire department. Yes, actually we have a winch. We had a bus that went to drive to back up a driveway to turn around because we had a tree down 
and he got stuck. So we actually found the center point on the bus, lifted the bus up, put the winch on the front of the bus and spun it around <laughs> and awesome. let him get out. And what's this one here? This is our uh, toolbox on wheels. We have everything on this rig. Um, we're basically, uh, we, we run to a lot of the communities as a fast team. Okay. So we use this as our fast team rig. We have high angle rescue gear. We have scuba gear. We have active shooter equipment. We have bulletproof vests. We have everything on this rig. Yeah, you know? this is the one that, that I'm very interested in. Yeah. Do you mind if we actually do a separate episode and do a station rig? Absolutely, plan this? absolutely. Okay, so for you viewers, make sure you hit that notification because we're going to be doing a station rigs on this specific rig. And this is our, our newest rig. Um, this is a 2021 Pierce, 110 foot stick. This is, uh, has 500 gallons of water. It also has a um, 2,000 gallon per minute pump. And we carry three cross lays and it got about 800 feet of four inch. Okay. So being so close to the Hudson River, are you guys mainly hydrated or do you have, we have do hydrants. you draft? Okay. Yeah, we, have, we have hydrants. We, our longest lay is like 1,190 feet. Okay. Uh, that, that's the nice thing about it being a small community. You know, you can calculate everything and you can pre-plan basically everything. Right, right. So. And with all this equipment, it's almost next to a quint where it's yes, got water, yes. it's got ladders, it's got everything but, that you need. But we try we try to do engine, engine, truck, truck. And, okay. You know, we have riding assignments for the, for the people and uh, you know, it works out great. Okay. You know, like if, if we go as a squad company, Depending on what they need, you know, we're either going to be an engine company or a, a, a ladder company. Yep. So we have the tools to do both. That's awesome. Now, I noticed that you don't store your boats here. You don't no. have all your equipment here. No. You have a couple of different pieces of property. Yes, we have, um, we have a training facility up at the uh, elementary school. They were gracious enough to give us uh, parcel land in the back so we can set up a um, uh, training facility. We have a boathouse that we keep all our marine units in, with the exception of our big boat, it's still in the water. Okay. And like I said before, the housing we have, and we also have our own gym. So okay. Our village board granted us permission to use one of the rooms at the community center, and we established a gym for the men and women. Can the we farm. go see those? We can absolutely go see them. All right, so for you viewers, come right along with us. We're gonna drive around the town a little bit, take a look at the rest of their apparatus and their buildings. Yeah, it's almost like you're on the side of a mountain out here. We, we are. <laughs> ah, that might be our mayor's car. You might get to meet our mayor. All right. This parcel of land used to be the old high school. I and mean, look at the view that you got from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. You can't ask for a better place to live. You really can't. Right. Especially to raise kids. It's... So now this is just a township building? Yes. Okay. And any of your members can come over and use the They gym. can come in anytime they want. Okay. And they're all kind of given a key or a yes, passcode Yes, they're all given a key. Okay. Yep. Is the mayor downstairs? He is. Is he? You want to go downstairs ball. and meet him? If yeah. Mind, if you don't mind waiting for a couple minutes. Yeah. How many mayors play pickleball? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mayor, we're, doing? We're, doing, we're doing a video with Hometown Heroes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our mayor, Bruce Tucker. Right. Okay, nice to meet you. Yeah. You, want, you want to say a few words? I just gave you all kinds of kudos on how, <laughs> how you uh, give us the funding we need. when And how, how supportive you are. We yes. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to interrupt your game too much. You know, this is the new fad of what everybody's doing. We're so. going. We're going to get the car next week for the PD too. Have a good day. You can definitely have that old school feel. You know, the elementary school. You have maybe first, second, yeah. third grade. All of this equipment wow. was donated. Okay. Nope. Oh, we didn't have to pay for anything. Right. Oh, there's my gloves. You literally have everything here. This is basically a gold gym. Yeah. Yeah. You got all your free weights, your Nautilus, yep. your treadmill. Yep. Love the fact the treadmill's facing out towards the water there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's great, you know. Like I said, everything was donated. We didn't have to buy a thing. Wow. That's the one good thing about this community too. People are very generous, you know. Right. We had one of our residents got a job in Florida and he basically donated a lot of the free weights and right. all the machines. So if you're ever thinking of becoming a member and you want to get a little bit of workout done, this is a good way to yeah. save some money on those memberships to those other places, yep. come down here, get your workout. It's even got the holes rack. Yeah. You know? so, well, actually we got an air pack in there. So what we make the guys do, I'm a fitness buff, you know? <laughs> I make them throw an air pack on with the, uh, the reduced mask. Okay. And either throw that on their shoulder or they grab 45 pound plates. Yeah. And they do uh, farmer carries up and down the stairs. Nice, nice. So that's why I'm still diving at 56 years old. <laughs> that's good.
All right, and then we're heading to where next? We're gonna go to our fire department housing. Okay. So this brown house was the one that was donated by Henderson? Yes, Luann okay. and Charles Henderson uh, don bought the house and donated it to the Empire Host Company. Okay, and how far away? I know we went the opposite way. One to block. One block. One okay. block. All right, and then they can just basically walk there if they need yeah. to during the yeah. summer, but they got the vehicles here too. Yep, and one of the, the uh, local residents owns this parcel of land. Okay. They let us park for free, you know. Everybody here is supportive of the fire department. Right. Yeah. I love the fact that the community is that close yes. that they donated a house to yes. you. Yes, yes. You now have firemen that are here to get those trucks out to help protect the community. Yes. It's a great big circle of life. And what we do is if, if the guys work on their own apartment, we'll just take that off that cost off the rent okay so if they if they put a new faucet in we take that off the cost of the rent right all right what's next chief we're gonna go see our training facility all right we cover all the way down to the gw bridge okay gw meaning george washington george washington okay you got it rolling Thirteenth reason Fire call? Copy that, yes. Okay. So right now, as we were just going around town looking at the different stuff, the fire call came in, so we're making the response. Hey, get a run in. That tight hairpin turns. Looks like an apartment complex. Is it an automatic fire alarm, or do yes. they report smoke in the building or anything? Uh, automatic fire alarm. Automatic fire alarm. Copy that. <laughs> So right now we're actually just getting this gear on. It's an automatic fire alarm, but you always want to be prepared uh, in, in case there is a fire. You know, many times we get dispatch to alarms that aren't anything, but that one time when you don't gear up and you're not ready for it, it's going to burn you. It's a standpipe building. The standpipe's a dry system. Um, it's got a sprinkler system. Uh, all heads are about 25 gallons a minute. So that'll give us, you know, that'll give it a head start to where it could knock it down a little bit. And, um, you know, the, the ladder company, they grabbed the tools that are part of their riding assignment. And you know, it, we try to be as professional as we can as volunteer firemen. Absolutely. We, we used to, <laughs> that's my cousin and his wife. I, I don't want to, she's one of our EMS lieutenants. What do you want? You want to meet them? Sure. Come on. No, I want to, these are the, this is Donna Lisi, she's one of our EMS Hello, lieutenants. Nice to meet you. This is my cousin Jim Lisi, nice he's an ex-chief also. Thank you for your service, so, guys, we yeah. appreciate it. Jimbo's a machinist. Okay. That's his nickname. Everybody's got a nickname yeah. in Fairmont. Yeah, the machinist. And, and Donna is a corporate boss. Okay. And she thinks she's the corporate boss here of me, too, so. It's, like I said, it's all family here. Yeah, I love the yeah. fact that, you know, this was just an automatic fire alarm yep. in the middle of the day yep. on, a, on a Saturday weekend, you know, where normal people are out and about. You got two full crews, yep. plus the chiefs, plus everybody else coming out yeah. and ready yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we over yeah. The over the hill gang. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the over the hill gangs who, who helped build this place. Right, right. So. All right, we're still headed over yeah, to- Yeah, we're gonna go to the training facility. Training facility. All right. Yeah, nice to meet you both. See you later. I started having fires, you know, I. I was getting 60 to 70 members at a fire back then. Okay. And uh, That's you a big know, span of control. Yeah. I had guys from World War II, guys from Korea, you know, guys that you always looked up to. And these guys are out there and they're changing air bottles and, you know, they're 60, 70 years old helping out. And there's nothing better than that when you have all the old timers that taught you everything you basically know and they're helping you. You know, I was assistant chief and, you know, one of my good friends was chief. I was young, I was eager. I wanted to run against him. One of the old timers come into the office. I'm sitting in the office and he says, and he addressed me as chief. This guy's 70 years old and addresses me as chief. And, you know, his name is Bud and uh, he, his nickname was Bud. And he comes in the office and he says, do me a favor. Don't do that because I did that and I lost a good friend. He goes, wait your, wait your turn. And I did. You know, it's, I, I kept a friend. Yep. You know, we worked very well together. So this is the local high school? That's the local elementary school. Elementary, okay. And this is our training facility. All right. My son uh, got this when he was uh, chief. Okay. So okay. basically we have a, a propane simulator that we use. And he put some right. desks in here to do searches. Right, right. 
So you kind of get the smoke rolling across the top. This is nice. You can set it up kind of like a little um, mobile home or something like that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the process of getting a second, second. a second Con Ed. We just ordered it. Okay. Con Xbox. So we ended up getting this from Carney, New Jersey from Jake's Containers. Okay. So it was nice. They did the doors for us. So we don't have to worry about any of that. They painted the exterior, the color that we chose. Okay. So, um, oh. yeah, we came in, we, we made this little Open it up, put a little obstacle in there, do search. Heck yeah. Well, if you ever watch some of our videos, we went up to uh, just outside of Buffalo, New York. Yeah, they really, have one really. that has a Connex box. They like multiple yeah. set up. That one's pretty huge. But even East Brandywine, where we are, they have a double setup where yeah. they did uh, drop floor and a couple different things. They actually split the floor on their second one. So you have a small space that you got to crawl through. Yeah. yeah, so we have a vent filter search. Okay. Uh, where we just strictly black out their mattress. It's all decking up there. Uh, we have a small parapet wall as well, so the guys can go over using the uh, the stick. Uh, we got a peak roof with panels, so you could actually cut, pop the panel out, put a new panel in. You don't have to worry about anything. We got window bars, props. We got a whole bunch of stuff for, for cutting with the demo soles. Yeah. Uh, with metal blades. We got Velcro doors in the back simulators so we have to cut the locks in there okay teams. so before you got this set up where did you guys have to go train where do you guys do your fire one fire two schools so and stuff like that when i was fire chief during covid there was no fire fire one okay so me and my officers took it upon ourselves to create our own program which was four months and i ended up buying all the criteria one okay we came up with our own program or our own tests using some of the criteria and came up with the calendar and we had days where it was strictly old classroom and then we had days where it was just eight hours hands-on okay we did everything from rope rescue which we have a highland rescue team yeah now, yeah uh to water rescue stuff we did first aid practicing bleeding control active shooter we did all that plus we also have three instructors that we sent to school to be state instructors nice if i were to join your fire company maybe i just moved into your area do i have to have any of that fire certification to start with uh -huh. or do you guys kind of teach it on the job we How train does that work? we train everybody okay we do all of a lot of our training is in-house okay. like well we hire people to do our emt class at our firehouse and uh we do all our own dive training we take somebody from not knowing anything about diving to a public safety diver. Nice. It takes two years, Okay. but when you're done, you're trained very well. Well, it's good to know that, you know, the viewers that are out there that might be interested, they're like, hey, I never, didn't even realize this was here. You know, driving past your building, yeah, I see it, but I never stopped in. A lot of them get nervous. They, they're not yeah. sure, can I go in there? I don't know anything. Yeah. You're basically saying, come with nothing. You come Absolutely. With, we'll teach you as you go along. Thank you so much yeah. for showing us. Wow. We appreciate Sorry. it. So where to next, Chief? We are going to our uh, boathouse, is okay. where we keep all our marine units. And I'm very interested in going to see this. You know, we don't get to see too many marine units. We yeah. went out to Denver, Colorado, did some South Metro. Yeah. We did some dive training with them, but you know, it's not too often we get to, to see this kind of stuff. So I'm interested to see what you guys have and how it's all put together. Like I said before, we are strictly black water divers. And we, you know, we train where we operate. We dive with, uh, we dive tethered with ropes. You have a primary diver, you have a secondary diver, which is a backup diver. And then we'll have a 90% diver just in case something happens. So from the station, how far is this? Uh, it's about a mile and a half. Okay. Nice and warm in here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We also got, we also do some winter training in here. We have a door prop. Okay. This is usually our winter boat, our big boat's usually in here. Okay. But I just had a, a feeling about this winter was going to be busy. So we kept the big boat in and we just, you know, we have a, a build cheater that keeps our fire pump on the boat. So explain to us what, what these boats are. This is a 21 foot Zodiac Hurricane. Okay. This boat, we got this boat in early 2000 by one of the um the local politicians gave us a, a grant to get this okay and uh we just had it retubed and repowered a couple of years ago with brand new uh yamahas yeah twin engine yeah why twin engine you redundancy because <laughs> when you're out there this time of year and one engine i remember we had a we had a tugboat captain having a heart attack they don't stop right so we went out there in this in a snowstorm so we had just gotten this uh, this guy from uh, FDNY. So you know, there's four divers on the boat. He's on the boat with me, and um, we had we had the uh, uh, one of the ex chiefs captain in the boat. So we pull up alongside the EMTs jump off, which most of us are, that are divers are EMTs. The one before these, the motor dies. So we get the guy, we package him, throw him on the boat in a snowstorm. 
So he looks at me, he goes, what happens if the other motor dies? I said, see the four divers up there? Yeah. They're swimming us home. So then you have another little Zodiac. Yeah, that, okay. when, when we go to uh, flooding areas, because in, in our county, if, if there's a car in the water or anything, we dispatch two dive teams. Okay. So what are, usually our, our assistant chief, he usually grabs the boats. So he'll usually grab this little boat and take this with us. Right. It's got a brand new Yamaha on it. Looks like you got a bunch of storage up top. That's too. all the dive gear we keep. Right. We keep all the dive gear down here. Okay. And that's our bailout prop for yeah. when the bailout prop up there is uh, not usable. Yeah. Or and when it's negative degrees out, you can yeah, train it in yeah, here and yeah. keep a little bit warm. And we do everything. I mean, we do all right. our own maintenance. Right. All, all of that is ready for maintenance. They sent me to school to be a Yamaha mechanic, the oh. village. Nice. So I do all the maintenance for free. Okay. So between the maintenance and all of the repairs, we save about $35,000 for the village. That's huge. And I train all the younger guys, so when I can't do it no more, they take over. Right, right. And uh, one of our other fire departments donated that JAWS setup, and that's the one we use underwater. Okay. To train, the, train our uh, dive team members. Right. So basically, make sure I understand this right. You get a call for a water rescue, you go to the firehouse, or you come directly to here, hook up one of your trucks, and then you it depends on what it is if okay. we, in usually in the winter when we have the big boat in here one of the one of the members that has a pickup truck or one of the chiefs will come down and grab this boat we okay. got a ramp right here okay. but as you could see it's full of ice right so if we can't get in on the south on the north side we go to the south side okay. and the dpw usually keeps that clean for us but if it's like a a, a flooding issue one of the chiefs or one of our em our one ems lieutenant he's got to pick up He'll come down here and grab the boat. Okay. And then they'll meet us on scene. Okay. Well, Danny, thank you so much for bringing us around. No we problem. really appreciate it. You know, Piermont is definitely a unique uh, fire department that has a lot of different resources. Rescue is your main thing, but you have the engine, yep. you have an ambulance, everything that you need. Yeah. So, you know, well, I want to thank the viewers for watching today. This is definitely a place that's uh, worth interest to stopping by. If you're ever in the New York area, per, we're 18 miles north of New York City, yep. stop by Paramount, take a look at their, what they got. I'm sure they'd be happy to, to walk Absolutely. You around. Absolutely. Once again, this was Heroes Next Door. Do us a favor, hit that notification, hit that subscribe button, and like and share these videos. We appreciate you, and we'll see you again next week. Okay, so for you viewers, make sure you hit that notification, hit those bells to make sure you hear it, because we're gonna be doing a station rigs on this specific rig.